She first appeared on our screens as a teenage presenter for the then very famous teens club. At just 14, she had stamped her feet in an industry quite virgin at the time. Today, 26-year-old Flavia Tumusime is undeniably a household name cutting across the country and the continent at large. What was so bad? You know, what, yeah. what pulled you back? Because you yeah. could tell me the record deal, you could tell me all that, but what yeah. pulled you back? Because you've got so much talent and you had a platform that was so huge that so many people sure. would have wanted. Sure. What happened? Why didn't you break out? Born in 1988 to a Ugandan father and Randy's mother, Flavia is an only child to both her parents. This, however, is not the only surprising thing about the broadcasting star. After doing rounds and research, we endeavored to book an interview with Flavia to unveil a story so interesting but yet inspiring. Successfully, she agreed, and I set an appointment. But considering the damage that tags with fame, her conditions and boundaries were as clear. So on a beautiful day, the crew and myself set out to find this not just beautiful, but also ambitious face of television and voice on radio. So as the latter, our destination is Capital FM, where she currently hosts a show. It's just a few minutes to her going on air, so she humbly welcomes and invites us to be her guests in studio. Nice to see you! For the most part, we have to be silent and let the diva go about her business. Chandelier coming in from Sia, absolute talent. I want to tell you that the first time I ever watched a performance from Sia, I felt awkward. I felt like, what? What have I done? Boa, what's this? Our money. The charisma and charm in her voice is not the only thing she brings to the table. Her smile is magical. During breaks, she takes the initiative to let me understand better how she goes about the show on a daily. When, when you work on radio, we're like mini DJs. You know when a DJ plays songs and they are smooth, you follow, you know, it's one doesn't just randomly join the other. Even with radio, you automatically have to be sort of a DJ. See, if 150 people request today, you have to pick songs that will somehow, you know, imagine it's lunchtime, people are eating, people are on the move, people are driving to go somewhere. You know, you have to pick the songs that will not make it uncomfortable for them <laughs> for their lunch break. So even if someone requested for bedroom bully, you know, you sort of like, <laughs> you know, you have to know. It's, yeah. You have to know the sound of radio, the sound of your show, how you want your show to sound. So, yeah. She winds the show and we head straight out for the interview. I'm Flavia. Good afternoon. Please join me as we welcome Flavia Tumsime to the show. Welcome to the show, Flavia. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. How You're are good? you? I'm fine. I'm glad to have you here today. Congratulations. You have your I show, know. right? Thank That's you. Nice. Thank you so much. Flavia, who hails from Rushere, Nyabushozi, was born in Kampala. I'm, I'm a 26-year-old, okay. uh, born and raised in Uganda, Kampala suburbs. I'm, I'm what they call a city born. Being the only band of joy that her parents shared, it was very devastating for the eight-year-old Flavia to lose her father. I lost my father at the age of about eight. Okay. Uh, so I've been raised by a very wonderful single mother who has done her best. We all say that about our mothers. I know. They're all the best. They're all the best. The most hardworking, beautiful <laughs> yeah. mothers. But she really is. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, by the time my father died, I was an only child. The decision for her mother not to get married again so tender Flavia battle against the walls of life with forever lifetime hero in all conditions. My mother had to now become the head of the family and okay. the transition I think took her a long time mm. to put her foot on the ground and have me through school. So everything has to change and if you've been in this nice school then things have to change, yes. situations change, yes. life changed in mm. general. So my mother never remarried never had other children, so it's just me. It's just you? It's just you me. You have no other siblings? I'm um, the apple of her eye. <laughs> oh, really? So you don't look spoiled. I had no opportunity to be <laughs> <I> spoiled. <know. laughs> 
I and actually, I think even when my father was alive, I wasn't spoiled. Okay. Uh, he was a very strict man who believed in certain things being done a certain way. Yes. Uh, he was very strict about getting your education, going yeah. to school, and all that. Uh, for my mom, I mean, my, my mom was always a mom. You know, mothers, uh, they have a sweet spot for their children. It only when my father died, the things had to change. It took me a while to realize things had changed. Yeah. When you see a different school, different house, different a everything. smaller house. Your smaller house. Yeah. Things are not coming in as quickly as they used to. Yes. Then I had to grow up. Yeah. So, but it's, it's all right. So that was, that was the start for me. So 26 years ago, I was born in Zambia Hospital. See, city born. That's been me. I've been around. It's just that uh, I think my life went through ups and downs on a personal level. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, been raised here. Never knew the village. Now I know the village. Okay. <laughs> but before that, no. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do you have any vivid memories when you're still a child that you still remember? Plenty, good or bad. <laughs> all mingle. All all memories. Um, yeah. I have. Sometimes I, I I go back to memories of my father because you know when you lose someone in your life that should have been ideally close to you. Yeah. You tend to go back sometimes, reflect on a few things, and my father was a, uh, I would call him a military man. He was not in the military, don't get me okay. wrong. He was just a very tough man. Yeah. And sometimes I look back at how I have made it in certain ways. And I think of how tough he was with me, how he didn't let me do certain things. And I just think he was such a bad person who didn't yeah. give me freedom. Yeah. But then you realize he was trying to teach you that when you get to the world, things are not as easy as you think. Um, then there's also Luganda. You see how in Jogi Luganda, Burundi, but I, I, I wasn't raised on Luganda. I keep telling everyone the story. Uh, my father is a strict Western man, yeah? And I came back from school, he had put me in Chisubi. So everybody was speaking Luganda, and I didn't speak Luganda in the school. Oh. So he, I'm a six-year-old looking at everyone, oh, they're talking about me, I don't know what they're saying. And I learned that when they call you, like, Zuena, Wanji, oh. you, that, that was the reply. Yeah. So I went home, because when you walked into the house, English, or your mother tongues. That's it. Yeah. And the, the help, house help said, Flavia, and I said, Wanji, my father swept in and slapped the life <laughs> And I'm like, wait, what did he do? He's like, what's that? I, she called me. And then how did you answer? Wanji, for who? I know, <laughs> what what's Wanji? I said, but that's how everyone at school says, everyone at school is not to see me flag. Yeah. You know the values you came with from home. Yeah. When you en when you enter school, teach them your values. Yeah. Don't let them teach you their values. Exactly. Teach them. When you come home, it's yes. <laughs> or you know, or your mother tongue. Never ever speak it. So for a long time, I thought Luganda was an abomination. Oh, because oh, yeah. the slap was hard. I know. <laughs> the slap was hard. I know. So yeah, that was one of the funniest experiences. And also at school, I went to Chisubi for the first few years of my life, and it's a boarding school. So I go to school and it's boarding school. It says, again, I will leave. We'll go there. So I said, um, it's lunchtime. <laughs> Where's the chicken? <laughs> I know. Where's the chicken? Who drinks water? I want milk. I know. And they told me, you'll be fine. We give you two weeks. <laughs> you'll be fine. And indeed, you're fine. I became <laughs> fine. You had no choice. Fine. At what age was that? Six years? From, from five, actually. I, I, I might have Ooh. gone to school at four and a half. I went to school a bit early. They were, tr they were trying to get rid of me at home. I don't know why. <laughs> no, not rid of you. I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's how it works. No, Five I think there was a lesson, a lesson they wanted you to learn, to something learn. they went yes. through that you have to go through. That you have to go through. Yes, yes, aren't I you was... proud of yourself now? Now, yes. Then, I nah, don't know, hell not no. much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. Tell me about your life, how your life changed when you lost your dad. How were things then? Um, it, it, it was very visible. I, th I thank God that I was young because yes. I think they gave my mother a chance to groom me. I think if it had happened when I was a bit older, I would have become a bit of a pain for her. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I think, I don't know if I was close to any of my parents at that age. Um, obviously you would say, oh, your mom is your mom, you have a good yeah. bond with your mom, but I actually think my parents were equally distant <laughs> when I was young. Okay. Not that they were not there, yeah. they were there, but I think they raised me as an adult. So even at five, six, I, I knew my mom, I knew my dad, but I was not attached to any of them in a yeah. clingy way. So when, when my dad passed on, I got to see the value of what I had vis-a-vis <laughs> yeah. -vis what I don't have yeah. now. And my mom did it in a way where she didn't have to sit me down and explain that, hello, things are changing. Your father has died. This and this. No, yeah. you just come you from just school and, and they've changed. Yeah. But she said, if you have questions, I will I'll answer. Mm. Now being a kid, I don't think I, I thought it was temporary, you know. Oh no, we're just here for a holiday, you know. The 
we're going yeah. to go back to the house. Yeah. And once I figured that things had really changed because the schools started changing, I had to go to another school. And you meet friends at school and you realize that, okay, I think my situation is this. And things have really changed. And now yeah. I only have mommy yes. and myself. Yes. And I, I, my mom said, you know what, get a good education. Once you do, you can then become somebody, take care of yourself and take care of me. Then you won't really have to think about it. Okay. And I think that's why I grew up too quickly. You yeah. know, I grew up too soon. I started thinking of, my gosh, so we can live like this forever if we choose to. Yeah. But I can actually wake up and, you know, go do something and change it. Because I, I, I wasn't happy. But, you know, I looked at my mom and I said, now, if, if, I'm, if I start crying for her, you know, it's not going to help her. It won't her. change anything. Yeah, this is a woman who's not the head of the family, but now she's forced to become a father, a mother, yes. and a brother, a sister. Yes. So I think I, I became a protector instead. I didn't want to burden my mom with all the questions. Oh, that's so cool. even when she would send me to school, you know, the pocket money. My pocket money was coins, 200 shillings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 200 back in the day was a lot. I know. You'd buy a donut and milk. So I, I'd, I'd always tell her, don't give me money, you know, I'll, I'll try not to eat, you don't have oh, to, you know. I know. I, I think the days I think about it, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd give birth to a child like me. I was so understanding. Yeah. And, and I tell her, why are you giving, why don't you save it? Because now fees will come and then it will be a and, lot. Yeah. I don't want to be sent home. Yeah. I'd, it, was, it, was, it was hard. Oh, it was yeah. hard. But I think we had each other. That was the power That's of it. That's great. Yeah. Life is a journey for all of us with its ups and downs. Each one of us determines on how they get through the downs. When we come back, we shall see how Flavia managed to get the strength to pull through the hardest time of her life. Do not go away.